Hey, word up YouTube, DW Blue Videos back with another, back with actually a updated video uh, with regards to the Charisma Coyote 2.1. Uh, we're going to make this video uh, as short and sweet as possible, so let's hop right into it. Um, if you watched my previous video, you know that we talked about a lot of my upgrades and things I did to this truck, and I will say they did make a world of improvement. Uh, so we'll, we'll go ahead and pull the body and we'll show you everything else. Um, as discussed, there was the servo upgrade, there was the ESC upgrade, there was the uh, spectrum receiver upgrade. I did upgrade the motor. I put in a 16 turn, uh, Reedy, I don't know if it's a radon. Yeah, I think it's a radon 16 turn five slot motor, uh, which the magnet strength on that one is definitely a bit, a little bit stronger than the stock 17 turn sealed can that came with it. So, uh, I, like I said, I've driven the vehicle with the stock Charisma radio, with the stock sealed can, and going to the Spectrum was uh, Spectrum system was just the resolution is just that much better. Um, the controllability with the speed control uh, going to the 1080 was better. Uh, just overall, everything was better. Um, and then go obviously then putting this motor in was was a, a bit of an improvement as well. Not to say the seal can can't do the job uh, it's just that you know anyone who you know if you guys watch all my videos and see my videos you know full well i can't leave well enough alone uh unfortunately that's sometimes how my mind works you know i try to i like getting my vehicles being able to put a battery in it turn the thing on turn the radio on and take the vehicle out and have a ball with it and not have one ounce of problems with it um that little battery and that three cell battery in there that just that was just going through the programming of the ESC checking some other things out um so on to the real thing uh, i did jump the gun on this a little bit uh this does crawl actually a little better than i expected and i'm not sure if that was because of the gearing uh i did change gearing a little bit uh or if it's the weight bias in the front or the tires or what i think it could be is the shocks now as you can see i did replace the shocks with a set of these pro lines that i had on, on an axial vehicle i took them off the axial and put them put the stock axial shocks back on that one and put the pro lines on this um, one thing you'll notice is that they are smaller in diameter which actually to me gives the truck a little more of a scale look because the charisma shocks are a little large and uh, I got to tell you, what a vast improvement in the way the suspension operates. I mean, it, the suspension just works now. Um, with the stock Charisma shocks, it, it kind of, you know, it kind of, I mean, it worked a little bit, but it kind of more bounced on things. When you put these on here, the suspension actually does what it's supposed to do. It absorbs small, smaller bumps. And, and whatnot, um, and the suspension just works. Now, what is the story with the Charisma shocks, you might ask? Okay, well, I've taken the Charisma shocks off. I played with the, I pulled the shocks apart, as I said in my previous video, I played with them, checked them out. I've tried uh, 20 weight oil in it to see how they felt. It still felt tight, they were, you know, stiff, a little stiff. I tried 10 weight, and there still was, a, it was softening up a little bit, but it was still a little stiff. And if you look at the valving inside the, the, the on the piston on the Charisma shocks, they use a four hole piston. And they, the four hole piston has plenty of valving in there. I mean, if it was an emulsion style shock, uh, that piston would, you, you would probably need 30 weight or better to get that shock to have a decent dampening, you know, where it slows the dampening down. It's the whole point of the oil, right? Well, the only thing that changed was the oil. The only things, there's things I couldn't change. I couldn't change really the O-rings in the shock because I didn't have any set of extra O-rings laying around to try. And I couldn't change the bladder. Well, whenever you, I pulled the bladder out to check it out. And the believe it or not, the bladder is actually thicker and it's stiff. It's kind of stiff. It seals well. Don't get me wrong. It seals against the body great, but it's thicker and it's stiff. 
And I think that's the entire problem with the Charisma Coyote stock shocks. Is that the, if you if you've ever built a Taraxis bladder shock or um, oh hell another brand another brand's bladder a shock with a bladder that goes in the cap, the thing is relatively thin. It, it, you can take it, set it you know cone side up, and push on it you know, and it's got some give. Well, the Charisma ones are stiff, and I think that's the entire problem with their shocks. That's what causes their suspension to be so stiff on their shocks. Um, so anyway, needless to say, I changed all that over to these and I have a whole different attitude about this truck now. Um, I didn't give up on it. Don't get me wrong. I, I do like the truck a lot. Uh, one thing I will say is if you do find these shocks, uh, I don't know if maybe like a, a retailer uh, e uh, on eBay might have some new old stock of them or something. Uh, but if you do get these shocks, I think they, if I remember correctly, they do come with a dual rate spring, uh, where you get a small one on the top and then the ring and then the longer spring. I took all them off and put on the, the standard ones that came in the kit, the, the, the standard rate, because I mean, it's okay to be soft at first and then have the stiffer rate, but it, it kind of, uh, you know, I guess six of one half dozen, it depends on what you like as, as, as a person. And how you like your rig to drive. Again, this is all about fun and everything else. But uh, one thing you will need to do is you will need to pop the the stock eyelet out of your stock Charisma shock and pop the one that comes with these off. And then take the Charisma one and pop it back into that eyelet. And when you do that, it, it snaps right in and it, it wiggles and moves like it's supposed to. It doesn't. It's not loose. It, it kind of does snap in. So it's not, I mean, it's not coming off. I mean, it doesn't move on it. It's so you're, you're not going anywhere. And I will say that that right there was the largest, one of the other largest improvements you can make to the Charisma Coyote. So if I was to run down a list real quick of major improvements to this truck, um, probably number one would be your steering servo. Change that out to something with more power. Uh, which again, this turns into a rabbit hole. So, uh, followed by your second upgrade to the vehicle, I would say is to change out that Arc One ESC. Um, it's not terrible. It's not great either. Um, it's kind of a toss up. Either change the Arc One out or change the radio. Um, it's really a toss up. I I think the resolution you'll probably notice a little bit of a difference with the, uh, you'll notice the difference with the arc one on there. Uh, I think the hobby wing kind of masks the performance of the radio with the stock charisma, uh, setup. And then, um, you know, probably the other biggest upgrade would be the shocks. And I would say run it like that. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at, at how much better this truck handles, performs, and does what it has to do. So, uh, you know, can could have Charisma done something uh, to more evolutionize this truck? Yes, they could have. And I feel making high clearance steering link, they could have made a new mold for the knuckle. That would have been fine. They could have given us a new knuckle where they uh, where the, the the top part here is, is shorter and this one's a little longer. So when you steer and you're driving, the truck is not kind of pushing like this, where it where it pushes the tire into the dirt when you're trying to turn. Um, they could have given you the metal the metal tie bar here. Uh, this piece originally is metal. I changed mine. I made this one up for it because I wanted to try to eliminate some of the bump steer. Um, but other than that. So far, no complaints. Uh, at this point, I'm happy with the truck so far. Uh, it's been it 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 gave me no. It's a lightweight truck. I mean, it, it, I think we need if we add a little weight to the front of it and to the wheels, not a ton, but just add some weight to the front end of it. Maybe add some aluminum wheels to it, or add lead weights inside the front wheels of these, and maybe some in the back, just to help weigh it down a little bit. I think this guy is it will do pretty darn well for for an entry level truck. I don't think it'll take a whole lot to get it there. So, um, other than that, YouTube, that's about it. 
I'll upload this video and I will send the outside driving one of the truck and you'll see some of the suspension work on how that operated. So, all right, YouTube, thank you to any new subscribers and please like, subscribe, and I uh, hope to see you guys out on the trails and uh, enjoy. So, peace out.